Hello. G'day. How's it going, Mr. Sunshine? And everybody else? Um, went for it to start up. It says it's going to start soon. It'll start. You've got to skip through this stuff at the, at the start. I'm a bit confused over this starting stuff. It's hard. Still getting used to the technology. But I hope you're all really well. Um, hello, Hooter420. How's it going? Um, today, I'm going to... What's today's things? Sorry, I was going through it. Yeah, I'll share it. But today we're going to talk about the plant microbiome, the endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid system, <clears throat> and free yoga class. And also I'm going to talk about some nanofolia technology, which is pretty cool. So I'll start and share the screen and get into it. I've got the... Oh, that's what I should have done change the internet signal all right i'm going to do that because this one's always laggy so what i've been doing previously is getting on a different internet signal and it's been on my phone's signal and it's been working a lot better so i'm just going to quickly do that i've nearly done it so i do it so often uh, tether. there it is and then this hopefully should work a lot better and I hope the signal doesn't even drop out for some reason. All right, there we go. I should change the screen and give you some trichomes to look at. There you go. All right, tethering, it's on. There you go, Grokowski. <laughs> Cheers, brother. <laughs> Mongol going up. Oh, yep. Yeah. Cheers. Show you a new Monty. It's happening, Monty. All right, now I'm on the good. Now it should be no interruptions. Yep, good, it's working. Sweet. Well, I just transferred. So, I can get into it. Now, where I was up to, why didn't Monty come up on this one? I've got the chat open on another on the tablet now. There it is, good. So, I can keep up. So, I'm going to show this, share all the slides, and then I can still see what's going on with the chat so i have to put that in front of me jesus technical all right entire screen nearly there three minutes in just really ready to start unreal share screen oh you can see all this stuff oh this is what i'm going to that's the stuff i'm going to be talking about today plant microbiome ecs endocannabinoid system yoga class and did you know that from 1850 to 1937, cannabis was used as prime medicine for more than 100 separate illnesses and diseases in the, in the USA. It was called pharma, pharma copa, yeah, oh, shit, he's probably pronounced it better than me. <laughs> but yeah, and it was only taking off the um, American Medical Association in about 1930s or something like that. It got taken out and um prohibited oh it says 1937 jesus i was looking all right and this is pretty cool this is in australia this is a photo there's a place in australia called wooden bomb it's over near nimbin uh northern new south wales and yeah that's the actual name of the place and this fella seems to be pretty um yeah anyway isn't a cool photo i thought you'd laugh at <laughs> there's our look at our old phone boxes <laughs> there you go, a bit of Australia for you out back. This is something cool for the ACT residents in Australia. You can actually get your cannabis tested, and the government or Sydney University more so are looking for 
pay, um, people to submit their specimens. You've got to give, I, I, I spoke to them because I was a bit concerned about some of their criteria. You've got to submit half a gram for uh, just a basic test, three grams for pesticides and six grams they want for uh, heavy metals, I think, something along those lines. And I said, who can spare that? Under the laws that there are, it's just so hard to actually spare any. Um, so they just they said, yep, if you want to be a part of it, you can. And they are, they are prohibition there for it because I said, this is going to open up a lot of problematic strains. You know, there's going to be heaps of cultivars with problems in it because we've got Australian bastard weed and that means there's going to be fungal issues and all sorts of bad problems. And that's, I grew up here, so that's actually what happens. And they said, no, what they're trying to do is they're going to show it. And they said, well, if anything, the government and the ACT should be playing, supplying plants um, like they're doing in Thailand. So after I heard that from one of the researchers, I thought, well, that's pretty cool. At least they're for it. So this is a system you can get onto it. Just get onto that website there. Um, they come to your address or a address and pick it up. So our courier will pick it up from your home grow cannabis samples. Yes, yeah, so I thought, right, eh? whatever. Um, that's what the criteria is. Here's a cool thing. Good on your Germany. Go and legalize it. Don't have to go through all the rot that they do in Australia. So the German government is clearly moving forward with plans to legalize the plant. A delegation of members is currently touring California and last week gave a report by Instagram. So this progress, oh, that'll do September 20, 2022, a few days ago. So yeah, good on you, Germany. Looks like Switzerland. And I thought this is pretty cool. This is in Thailand. Because Thailand, um, they're ramping up because the government has legalized it. And they're actually supplying plants to people because they realize the medicinal properties and how valuable it is for the public. And um, yeah, they're giving great opportunity. Good on you, Thailand. But probably should probably restrain it a smidge better. But I just thought it was pretty funny. I'm not talking about his driving. <laughs> his, um, Restrict your load or secure your load sort of rules. It's just good on to the government. The ECS system, endocannabinoid system. And I like this because it just gives a really good understanding of what it does. And the endocannabinoid system is simply a cannabinoid-like substance that naturally occurs inside us. And the endocannabinoid system is like an air traffic controller that allows the substances to land on receptors like runways in our brain and bodies. Use of various cannabis types allows this system to work in opportune levels. Yes, medicinal cannabis is the go. All those different entourage effects. Oh, I should read this, sorry. Oh uh, yeah, Aussie Grow Show, g'day mate. How you going, Banana Farmer? Monty, Banana Farmer, wooden bong water is a cool book <laughs> oh this is a look how rad this is this is a video cool innovation i love this look at it. that's so clever old farmers how can i feed them and do two things at once i know i'll put strap something to a fan and i'll make me wife stoked <laughs> i laugh when i saw that and see how happy she is too <laughs> He's sitting there real proud of his little um, watermelon dosing machine to his wife who's working hard. She's, yeah, look at that. Woo. <laughs> yeah, look at me. All right. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah, this is the thing. I can't give much, but if you five for support, but I can share my lectures and I can help people out with video calls. So if you're going through doctor problems or through legal problems or some type of medicinal legal issues I might be able to help you out somehow or companies I might be able to help you set up and things like that so that's what this is for that's a support thing all right actually I'm gonna have to check here uh, domestic oh no I have to show that bit to get back first before I get onto this bit it's um, sharing screen so I have to share this bit and this while well, I was on the, about the countries that were doing really well with their legalization. Recognize this flag, everybody. Get ready for them. Yay. 
all of my, all my Maori friends in Australia, they all smoke and they're hardcore. They just love it. Yeah, chew bro. Hey, get out of chew bro too. Um, they just love it. That's what they used to always say. And look at this. Domestic cannabis is finally coming to New Zealand. Can you bloody believe that, Australia? I'm so pissed off with this country. Dead set. It's so such a helpful thing. Three days ago, this was written. Yeah, I'm just shaky over just thinking about that Australian government. Anyway, good on you, New Zealand, for doing the right thing. So government officials in New Zealand have gra finally granted permission for domestic cannabis cultivation. Yes, the Ministry of Health has approved homegrown and manufactured medicines. So, yeah, homegrown, like Canada. You can just grow in your home because that's what they recognise, that people need this medicine. They can't afford it. They need to do it. And, yeah, so the Kiwis no longer have to rely on imported medical cannabis, like Australians do. Yeah, we might have a few things here, but if you actually look to the cruts of it, we're importing a shitload of cannabis, absolute shitload. So that's what Australia has to do because of politics. There's nothing more I can really say. Good on you, good on you, um, New Zealand. Jacinta Trudeau, no, not Jacinta Trudeau, Jacinta Ardern, uh-oh, sorry, Kiwi people. But yeah, congratulations. Leave that up for a bit because I'm really proud of you guys. I can't wait for the day of Australia do something like that. <laughs> uh, all right, good on you, New Zealand. I'll just read the chat while I leave that up. Um, Monty Fratell, g'day Fratell, there you go. Sunshine, people are losing their minds under the global agenda with free cannabis countries. Yes, Australia needs to pull their finger out. Well, Australian government, sorry, needs to pull their finger out. It's terrible. Um, all right, so I think I caught up there. Now, this is pretty cool. This is a free yoga class to, involved with the endocannabinoid system. Um, so a remote gathering to discuss scientific Oh no! Oh, here we go. Jo Journal Club exploring yoga's effect on the ECS. So come explore how yoga affects our, your endocannabinoid system. Join a group of curious pharmacists for a fun discussion about interesting emerging cannabis science. Um, so you press register, and then it takes you. I'll just press it. it. Takes you to this page, and you fill it out, and it says you've got a. It says the fee. It's nothing. So after you fill it out, I've already done it. I hope it doesn't come with more details. I'll press it for you guys. There you go. You just got to fill that out. Register. That's it. And then it links you in. Time left. But, but yeah, it's free. So you leave check out. Yes. So I want to show you down the bottom what it's about, about this event. During the event, uh, we ask that you read, you know, Come on, come all. So I take oh, geez. During this digital journal club, a member of will lead a topic discussion around an article of their choice and discuss strengths, weaknesses, and clinical applications of the study. So because it's involved with the endocannabinoid system and yoga, that's what it's going to be about. So it looks like this is a very generic thing that they've written. Oh, the website is their event. Oh, how are you going to get the link? That's all right to say it. Uh, well, I hope you can zoom in on that. Maybe, how can I get you to, I can put that, oh yeah, copy it and put it in copy and put it in paste. Does that work there? Let's see. <laughs> Did it come up in chat? It did, there we go. Sweet, that's the link I'm talking about. So that link there will get you to this page if you want to register for the live online endocannabinoid system yoga class with the pharmacist cannabis, no, what's it called in here? No, oh, there it is. PCCC, Pharmacist Cannabis Coalition of California. That's who it's hosted by. Next thing is how nanotechnology is leading cannabis in new era. So this is sort of to follow on from last week because I did really go on about nanotechnology a fair bit but I found this too and thought shit better throw it in so that's a good time now rather than later um, well, I went on about nanotechnology and it's different ways you can 
synthesize and attract and bond different things to get an outcome. So this is a nano emulsion. So this is the using of oils as their carrier, sorry, as their, um, their chemical. And the carrier, you know, you can use different ways, the nano tubes, nano fibers, nano cubes, nano cores, all those different things to bond them onto. So their synthesizing way, anyway, I don't wanna go into it too much. I think I've covered it in the last, last week. But nano emulsion is what they do with this, with the cannabis is it's composed of cannabinoids, terpenes and flavonoids, which can, can, can be converted into emulsified nanoparticles, such as emulsified CBD and THC. So it's broken down into smaller particles that resemble layers of fat that form lipid nanoformulations, LNP. The combination of water and oil packed molecules allow cannabinoids to remain protected from degradation while traveling through digestive systems. So they can, uh, for cannabis uh, technology would reduce the amount of cannabis needed for each product because the nanoparticles produced through the emulsification process can deliver the same or better quality and improve effects for smaller initial quality of the raw product. So it's getting better and faster ways to synthesize, to get it into our bodies. It's done through oil. They do a few different techniques. They've tried to bond them. Uh, it's a snazzy looking photo. That's not how it actually is because you know these bubbles well, actually, it depends on what level that's at, because that could be what it is. Um, other than offering, there's a good conclusion in here somewhere. Nano emulsions are also make it easy to dose. So the state will be very happy. So for five milligram products, as an example, they're talking about here, they can infuse them into beverages and into different products, and they can be fastly and um, readily adopted into our bodies, like if you want to use topicals or um, induce them and stuff like that uh, down the bottom. However, the resources and time required to produce nano emulsions will likely see their party from medicines to cosmetics to edibles. So there's multiple things you can do with it. All right, now back to shield sharing here. Thanks for that. I'm going to have to have a drink. I'm going to read and catch up. I should put on a nice page in the uh, shit oh this is what I'm going into now is it I thought it was something else then I follow your spray that's what it's called all right that's what I'm getting on to next this one so novel micronutrient formulations conventional micronutrients as we um, novel micronutrient formulations this is to do with well, it's foliar spray, nano foliar spray. Um, and I found this pretty interesting there on the bottom that zinc is a cross linker in the polymer chains along with magnesium to make it insoluble. So what they do, they'll coat a NPK or some sort of fertilizer with zinc and that makes it insoluble. And they also use magnesium and that has the same reaction. So when you apply these, you know, either of with things that's the outcome the way that the a cool way that they're doing acidic metabolites ex, exudated in root zone chelate with zinc from polyphosphate chains to make it slowly available how that works um, so the roots put out the exudates and they have organic acids in them and those acids react with the zinc and Chelate, so chela is the uh, Latin word for claw, so it locks on and then it can make it s slowly available because it's locked on and holding it there. It's not being washed away or anything like that. That's the first line. The extent, I'm not going to read this. Um, K 
chemical and biological methods can synthesize zinc oxide and nanical particles since chemical methods require toxic biological applications biological methods are becoming more popular because it's all about the environment we've got to save that next page for the synthesized yep to synthesize them yep that plant leaf extract can be prepared in solvents this is how they do it such as water ethanol methanol zinc oxides are synthesized by mixing the extract with the zinc sulfate hectohydrate and ph it nano silica helps easily penetration through leaf cuticles on foliar sprays here's a little um thing how they've done it so zinc oxide nanoparticles have been tested in the lab on bactericides and fungicides such as strept streptococcus and bacillus subtilis and pseudomonas pseudomonas should i tell you a story about pseudomonas ask, ask me at the end a bad story about friggin pseudomonas Grrr. Yes. Anyway, back to this top, this slide. Um, I had a battle with Sun Monas. Yeah, still fighting it. Um, Sun Monas syringi, that particular species. So what happens? This is what I was talking about in the last slide. So just how they synthesize it with the plant extract solution. They'll add the salts, the metal, the zinc oxides. Um, or you can use magnesium as it's suggested and here you can use what gold silver copper and zinc um, and then it changes color so you know that the reactions happened and then that's the foliar spray that you'll be applying and then that's worked successfully against a bacteria and fungal sides bacteria side and fungal sides so you don't need that you can just use the xeno, um, nick xenoparticles and it'll um, work the same way rad technology and save the environment at the same time all right oh I'll just read, catch up on a bit of stuff in here. I saw some PTP, Egar May. Um, I'll just scroll up a smidgen. Oh, I'll still keep that slide on. I want to grow CBD. Oh, there's a fair bit here I'm going to go through. Put, if you can, put a question mark at the end of your questions, and then I can see your questions easily, please. And then I can leave them till the end so I can go into it in detail. Because at the moment, I'm just seeing if you've got anything... Kind of related to what I'm talking about here, so I can talk about this before I go on. It looks like all pseudo bastards. Yes, I oh, finished the eggs and bacon brekkie. Oh, yeah, okay. So, if you want to do foliar sprays too, you want water soluble fertilizers, so there's no point putting on something that's got to be broken down by microbes. So you'll want it in the form of it to be available like nitrate or ammonia or orthophosphates, the P2SO4 SO um, or the, just the red, the ones that the plant can uptake. So they're the foliars that it will work with. Other foliars won't work because the plant won't be able to uptake it. So for people who have had not success with foliars, that's probably why. Um, Water-soluble fertilizers are for foliars are a must. So are extremely convenient to use pre-mixed salts and simply sprayed. WSF are used in sprinklers or drips or foliars to increase yield and improve product quality. Yes, and it's also to, um, well, the yield deficiencies, it eliminates deficiencies up very fast too. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, here's some benefits. Higher resistance to disease and insect pests through from foliar. Improved drought tolerance, improved salt salinity tolerance, higher resistance to physiological disorders, rapid utilization of applied nutrients, and therefore rapid correction of observed deficiencies. And that's awesome. Yes, I've been, I love it. All right, so into the microbiome of plants. So this is the microbe section. The phylosphere is the above ground habitat of the plants. That's and the rhizosphere is the below ground, which is right next to the roots, which is where they call the rhizosphere, where all the microbes are located in the exudates. Uh, the phylosphere can be home to up to 10 million microbes on each square centimeter. And in the soil, for each square centimeter it can be 10 billion microbes 
yes, up to 30,000 different microbe species. Yeah, a lot of them lay dormant. So you'll be sitting in spores. See this, that's a, a prokaryotic cell. So they're the long sort of, they can be old shaped, as you can see here. But say they're like that, they'll put an endospore down in one of them. So when they form, they'll function up here. Then the other back half of the prokaryotic cell is the endospore. So when it dies off, it can re-germinate again in its favorable conditions. So a lot of the stuff in here won't be active. It would be laying there in spore forms. And same with fungal seeds. They, they're the little round things. They're not looking like these pathogens, but the little um, yeah, round things without the hyphae on them. They're just round. And pathogens of also in the soil to have a good, healthy soil structure as well. The plant hollow by ont represents the microbes interactions that lead to plant diseases so plants interact with a plethora of microbes that can help them acquire nutritional responses nutritional resources so that's why from one plant you can put out so many different types of secondary metabolite profiles from this reason the plant speaks to the outside environment It'll attract things that it wants. It'll repel things that it doesn't want. Um, did you know that it's got a gene called FLG22 gene, flagella gene in the plants that can pick up if the bacteria has a tail on the end of it, which is called a flagella. Um, some other interesting things. Airborne and endopathogenic. Yep, that's how you can get in. And some of things like things just bloody kill them. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'll get back to root rot and vascular diseases get in through the soil. Yeah, you've got your umycetes, which is your um, your class of water pollutants, like the water um, pathogens that are um, botrytis, which is up the top. It's your root rot, your pythium, um, which causes dampen dampening off fusarium problems. Um, anyway, that's a bit about that. I don't want to bore you resistance induction you can create resistance through using um salicylic acid chesmoic acid ethylene and you can induce your plants creating a SAR systemic acquired resistance pattern you do a, a induced acquired resistance iar which goes systemic to other sides of the plants and then it'll travel to other plants to also through allelopathy you know it'll be getting carried away i haven't even read chat sorry I'll just finish up this because I think I'm nearly finished. Yeah, nearly finished. Just got to go through foliar and then got a little bit about something pretty interesting. That's it. So plant growth promoters as biostimulants. This is what you all should bloody use, dead set. Like it's the organic way and it promotes natural growth promotion. Include here. Enhance your crop, crop growth, improve nutrient availability and encourage soil microbial activity. Growth promoters boost the all-round development of crops by regulating their metabolic activities from the root to the leaves. Natural growth promoters include predominantly seaweed extracts, organic acids, be careful about their pH if you're using organic acids, growth hormones, enzymes, organic acids, humic and fulvic acids, and beneficial microbes. Uh, seaweed extract has so much a, a plethora of micro and macro no of mi macro micronutrients. It's only got um, its NPK is I think the N seaweed extract 0.5 and 4 and 5. It's got a decent potassium and phosphorus. Um, and the humic and fulvic acids is always just a bonus. You, well, yeah, that ratio. What was it? It's a three is to one ratio. I think I use. I use three parts seaweed to one part fulvic acid or no even a five is to one five parts seaweed i just use a smidgen of fulvic and humic acid it's just enough to get in there it breaks down pretty fast and it's really it dilutes very well so you'll see it when it dilutes um that's the blend i regularly do for foliar sprays and unless i'm trying to correct um deficiencies that's a pretty good one and um, just do it like I was saying the other day. I do it to 50 to 80 ppm. Very, very weak mix. Oh, this is cool. 
hang on, there's more, there's way more on Folia stuff. Ah, shit, eh? Yeah, because I have I want to get, this is the end bit. That's really cool. And I'm going to try and find where's all the Folia stuff. Oh, I did do through it all. Oh, that was it. Ah, oh, shit, we're nearly done. All right, this is the end bit. What if I told you that cannabis trichomes have a microbiome that's run by bacteria? You go, you're full of shit. Well, I'd go, well, have a look at the screening because this isn't, isn't a study I did. This is just something that I read and I thought it was very cool because it shows you. And the scientists here, they've gone and put the arrows where they think where they can show the differences of the bacteria that run the development of the trichome. Um, figure eight, glandular trichomes of cannabis sativa developing glandular trichome of hemp stained with nitro blue tetra to show superoxide, the blue colored purples. So that's what they've shown there. And that's the reactions that you're getting around the clusters of bacteria. Pretty cool technology is so good in it. In it. <laughs> um, all right, this is the end, purple Pakistani citral on mega zoom very very nice that's so mega zoomed purple pakistani citral that's the cultivar in front that's um it looks like it's a bit aged doesn't it that's extremely holy mackerel that's close yum imagine if they were that big i've had some that have come out that are so big they measured 200 microns and they usually measure about 20 microns across I got them 200 so that you'd pick them up in your extraction filter. Like, imagine that they got ice creams. That's the ice cream. Or we got to do. Oh, look at the little baby one next to it. I didn't zoom in. Wow, we. One's growing off the side of the other one. Wonder. Oh, look at this. Bit of a neck problem there, fella. <laughs> oh, female. <laughs> All right, I'm getting carried up. That's actually quite nice, isn't it? It'd be nice to leave it up there. I think I've finished. Oh, yeah, because that's the thing for next week. I was going to talk about smart fertilizers. So there's, um, they've got, they've devised now techniques where exu dates can unlock the fertilizers when they need it. And m microbes, when it gets to a certain level, can break down the exterior of the fertilizers they're coated in to release at certain stages. Because that's in um, precision agriculture. The future is to feed the plant when it needs. And there's, a, say, three growth stages, for instance. You can do it in veg, and then there's one when you flip, and then there's one halfway through flip, or if, you know, three weeks in when it changes and goes into heavy flower. You can even do two, but, you know, you want to get the potassium up in the second. Anyway, so you could say two or three definite defined growth stages, and by doing this with slow release um, and different ways to unlock it, it's it's a win-win for organics in the future. So this is what I'm going to go through a bit on this next week. I'm not even going to read that, I think. I should just read chat. I think that's all for today. I'll just go and have a look. Oh, there's a terpene chart. No, I'll do that next week, eh? Yep. I think everything's covered. I haven't even read chat. Sorry about that. I apologise, but I'm going to read chat right now. So uh, it would be good to put it on that. Zoom in, people go, wow, look at this big ice cream. Yeah, I want that ice cream too. Where do you buy, buy that from? Wow. Imagine you hit it and it, all that oil falls all over you. Oh, it's all over the floor. Clean up that cannabinoid oil. We're going to slip over. And people licking the ground. <laughs> people running in. Look, it's busted again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Good weed. Woo. All right. I've got to scroll up a fair bit, I think. I'm going to change it to this background so you don't have to just watch me. So I'll go, I'll put, should put the link in too. If there's, oh, that's not the link. Invite link, just in case anybody's Dr. Nexus, definitely. I hope he's feeling much better. Um, yes. All right. So I'm back at the top. Wombat, so oh, g'day, Wombat, here you go, mate. Wombat Organics. I'm just cruising down. Just finished. Yep. Hey, Monty. 
No doubt for tell. Can we replace foliar sprays with worm casting tea? No, um, you want to do both. The foliar sprays are only for micronutrients and it's only going to uptake a smidgen. So it's not going to feed the plant. It's only going to like eliminate deficiencies and help with a bit. It's sort of like um, saying, can you go and drink tea and survive? You need to eat sort of stable meals to you know, get all your, your massive amounts of energy from. Same with plants. They still need the, the rhizosphere to have available nutrients around them and, and water for them to suck it up. To round suck it up, to transpire. I hope that helps for a tell. Oh, that was the medical. That was the, not medical, that was what I was just reading off the screen. Read my mind for a tell, Sunshine says. Uh, yeah, worm, worm casting tea, you can even use that as a foliar, but be careful that there's no no pathogens in there that you're going to inoculate the leaves with. Um, yeah, because you're putting in shitloads of different types of fungi and stuff. And if, remember, if you get your water activity level or your humidity above 60% humidity, Aspergillus is one of the fungus that, yeah, because it goes green, one of the fungus that um, can be activated. So, yeah, my... So by doing that, you could potentially giving yourself problems, which I have done in the past. <laughs> you can still do it though. It's, it depends. I gave it problems because I had um, problematic pathogens and then I gave them their favorable environment conditions for them to thrive. Monty asks, can you foliar spray worm juice? Yes, yes, definitely. Similar thing, what we were just talking about. Um, dilute it. Um, and another thing I've considered too is putting it in the oven or getting it up to 62 degrees Celsius for it to pasteurize and that's supposed to kill off all the pathogenic problems. I haven't tested this. I'd love to test it because, well, it's good to test everything because I just don't know. Oh, that was Monty's thing. He converted to, uh, right, whatever. Um, where's, yeah, Monty... PGRs, plant growth regulators. Plant growth, re P20, PT, PTB says plant growth regulators. Plant growth regulators are something that changes and, or alters the plant. So it might, for instance, um, stop it stretching. It might change its branching patterns. It could uh, stretch it. You could give it gibberellic acid. It could do something like that. So it's something that modifies or alters the normal habitat, um, the normal thing of the plant's growth and development. That's what plant growth regulators are. Where the thing I was going on about before, which was the um, plant promoters, they're the ones that will promote cell development and healthness in the plant they won't alter it oh here we go how do you chelate your kelp and alfalfa um well they've got minerals inside of it so they're already locked up um that's got to be broken down by microbes um they've got to be that oxygen can break things down but to more so it happens with microbes so that's why with organics people put them in their slow release types of stuff uh how can you chelate your kelp? Well, for things to be chelated, this is pretty technical. Um, it's an anion. It's it's to do with electrical, your redox and your cation and anion exchange, because you've got a plus and a negative, and that's got to be bonded together. Because you know opposites attract. And then if you've got, for instance, the chlorophyll uh, molecule has a magnesium at its center and then on its it's a plus so mg plus will be in the center and then it has anions or ligands that go off the anions so that goes off it and that's the uh, nitrate nitrate which is a, a negative so it's that no3 minus so those two can stick together so that's like a bonding thing and to chelate it a keeler is to be locking onto it and holding on like we were talking about with the zinc and magnesium beforehand um and that goes to do with this is so technical i'm going to show you i'm going to share my screen first how do i do that again 
because uh, it's a great question. I like these hard questions. Share screen. I haven't even got the slide ready. Tire screen stuff, whatever. Um, these are my courses I've done, so I can relate to that. And there's one right in here pretty quickly. Look here, the, the bonding strength. This one. So this is the bonding strength. So if you have sodium or ammonium, it's nitrogen. If you have that down the bottom and it's bonded on and holding on with, um, what's it? These are the, the cations, so it has to be a negative. So if you've got, what's it? Okay, what's the negative? Um, nitrate or nitrite. They're both negatives. So if you've got it sitting there and then it'll be locked onto something. So you've got a negative with all these positives. So sodium will be there. Then all of a sudden ammonium will be found. It'll come along and bump into it. And because it's got a stronger bonding strength, the ammonium will take its place and it goes up the chain. So that's why in high saline conditions, which is in alkaline soils, they have high amounts of calcium because it's taken the position and it's just overpowered and there's a lot of calcium and aluminium in the soils that are high pHs. That's why you put your lime in and it, and it bonds to it and grabs onto it and, un and chelates to something else so all these things can become available, drops the pH. I hope that was explained. And here's the... There's the, that's how it happens. So in the soil, um, these are the clay particles. They will be attracted with the positives from the cations as the positives, and then the clay particles are the negatives. So they're attracted to it, and it bonds to it and chelates with that. And then that will jump through. It'll hold on to the particles. They'll get broken up, so they'll still be chelated together. And then they'll get over here to the roots. That roots will break it down with its organic acids and then release one of them, and then that's how it'll get the element that it wants. The elements that it wants are these ones. These are the only forms that the plant can uptake. So if you want to foliar spray anything but nitrate or ammonium, it'll sit there unless microbes can work with it or you're using oxygen or some type of redox potential to break it down. Same with your phosphorus. It can be only be with your these H2PO4s, orthophosphate primary and secondaries. So that's that's this list here is the only list that can be uptake by the plant. So that's the ones why the good salts, good fertilizers have these in them, and the bad ones um, don't have them in them. That they have to be transformed into this. That's why there's the difference between the good and the bad ones. Hope that helped. Sunshine. Is seasonal, is sea salt good stuff then? Sea salt is a brand in Australia we get that's highly diluted. Um, do a PPM on that and you'll find you've got to nearly tip the whole friggin' thing in. So no. Sorry, sea salt. It's diluted, mate. I can't, you know, you don't want to buy water. What you want to get is, uh, what's the best way? Like, you want to get it in pelleted form or in powdered form because that way you can break it down. With these pellets, the size of them is their slow release form. So the bigger the pellet, the longer it takes to break it down. So if I want to quickly release my nutrients from my organics, I'll crush them up. So I suggest doing something like that. Hope that answers your question. Monty, sea salt is awesome. Yeah, that's because it's kelp. It's got all the stuff in kelp. PTP, what's this? Humic and folic are part of my eight part nutrients. Humic and folic are part of my, well done, yes, very, very important. Folic acid is so rare too. And the humics, it's got humic, it's got humin in it, H U M I N, and folics in it, and many types of other um, humic acids. Oh, what's Wombat say? I was in an hydro shop and heard a bloke say, I need 200 mil. He said, keep upstairs PGR, so I want to use, so I want, so I won't use that hydro shop again. 
There you go. See, people promoting PGR. No, it's organics, mate. Organics, is, you can, no worries, do it. You can do it anyway. There's multiple ways to grow. I just want to do it and save the environment, best for the environment, so we can keep doing it. So I keep talking about agriculture. Everyone fucks the earth, and it's just, it's so terrible, mate. They just keep doing it, and they put pesticides, and they got to try and do all this. And it's because of money. It's just get back to the facts. Let's save the earth. Cheers, bro. How you going, Main Green? Uh, Folvig. Folvig is avocado. Looks like Banana Rami uses Folvig. Yeah, man. That's the way. I have an avocado seed. I'm going to try and pop it in the glass with your toothpicks. Good luck, Monty. Hope it works, mate. Just scrolling down here, trying to read some stuff. Oh, nearly at the bottom. Uh, 250K. Monty, here's for tell. Can I grow in worm castings? Um, yeah, you can. Um, but you want aeration. And in worm castings, there's no aeration. So the roots need, that's how they get the oxygen, is through the roots. So if you've blocked off that pathway, it's they're stuffed. And to get oxygen from the water it's 10,000 times more slower and they suffer so that's why you need aeration so you know some you probably could do it but they'll really really suffer I use 25% worm castings 25% organic compost and 50% perlite try and keep it nice JP yield source here you go. I'll get to you in a minute, mate. So there, I hope that helps for tell. Thanks for your question. Um, for tell, if you mix 50% perlite, see, it's good on your sunshine. He's onto it. Might be a little rich, says PTP. Yes, it can be a little rich. Some, if, if you're putting seedlings into that, um, it can be too rich. They, you'll see they'll get like a toxic effect and they'll start in shrivel. They'll get um, salt salinity because the salt mix is too high. Yes, uh, what's it called? Saline conditions. When the PPM is above sort of 2,000, you can test that. You can do a, um, run some reverse osmosis water through it, test the water first, tip it through your substrate and test the runoff and if the runoff is going to be above sort of two or three thousand that's when it's going to create that's when you've created um, the salt levels that are too high for the plant and it's going to suffer you can get um, cultivars that are resistant to it and it's a good um, another stress thing that we can introduce into our lines and if you live in those areas that's something you should consider doing in your breeding program um, but yeah good good um, add in there PTP part-time planting do you use lab CC? No, mate. I don't use lactobacillus bacteria. They are, I've, a fair bit of my studies has been in that and in food science, um, they covered that too. And that's to do with, they create a lot of um, biofilm, um, what's it called? Biofilm. Sorry, I saw you, JP. You sort of put me off there. Here you go, mate. I'll get to you in a minute. Um, they put out bioslime. And in that bioslime, it's very heavily wards off. It puts in heaps of antibiotics, and they're not very symbiotic. So I like to be very symbiotic with my micronutrients and have a lot of different strain, um, different, uh, what do you call it, genuses, species everywhere with the bacteria and the fungi so that they can unlock and do their little parts to try and work with the roots. So no, I don't use labs. We've got another fellow. Here, I'll get to you. I just actually, should I say? I'm not sure how to do this. JP, I'll say good day to you, mate. How you going, JP? Nice. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Hang on, oh, sorry, mate. On you. Good day, mate. I'm um, just running through a few questions here. JP's, um, he's a cool bloke from um, the states. He's got a channel as well. He's getting into it. So yeah, he's awesome. full of knowledge, man. Full of knowledge. <laughs> just trying. Just trying. I'm still a student too. Oh yeah, um, glad, glad glad to see you again though. Yeah, good on you, mate. Nice seeing you. Is, is it morning? Here. It's morning over in Australia, right? Yeah, it's ten forty nine a.m. Oh, 
we've got a um did you have your cereal yet shit yeah my I, oh i'm actually no i haven't had it i've been preparing for this <laughs> show to be honest <laughs> hey i've got um there's a spam in the chat i don't know how to get rid of it this is my first for me put um, user in time oh there it is block user to, you have to um an error occurred see. try refreshing the page first oh well jesus i don't know how to make people um nexus um, uh nexus has a wrench and he can help you all you have to do is click the three dots after their name like when you highlight someone's name it's three dots at the end and you can remove that person or remove that comment i've got i'm using stream uh, connects you also have the power to do that because you have a, a wrench a moderator wrench so if you see unwanted people or unwanted comments you're able to remove them nexus right eh? All right, I'm going to log in onto YouTube because I've got it here on um, StreamYards and I can't do that. If you I look up have... in your upper right hand corner in StreamYard, it says yeah. you can like uh, view on YouTube. You can click it and it'll open a YouTube page and then you can moderate the comments on there as well. Sick. I just did that. Oh, good. So I can. Oh, Nexus is here. G'day, Nexus. Mm -hmm. I haven't got to you down the questions down there yet, mate. Jeez. Oh, Nexus hit it. He's already done it. Yeah, Nexus Nexus has a moderator wrench. He can knock people out for you. Yeah, man. Good on you. Thanks, Yield Source and Nexus. Good no stuff. No problem. No problem. No problem. Where's How's the school been treating you, Aussie? Oh, I love it. I love the school. It's really new? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get to... I'll just scroll down and finish off the questions just in case because okay. I haven't had a chance to see Nexus. Okay. Um I love Aussie because you you blow my mind with the results of like the the answers. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it for a while, and then having the university studies of late has sort of linked it all up, and now it's just makes common makes all sense to me, and I can explain why things happen and why they shouldn't happen. I suppose it's it's quite right. useful. And right. if anybody's interested in these studies, um, they're not high paid. I'm funding myself. I'm very poor. I'm funding myself. Each each course I do is fifty dollars, Australian. So I've you know, I've done maybe twenty odd. So it's it doesn't cost very much over these quite a few years to fund yourself through a high high successful university. They rank um, in the top three hundred in the world too. So they're not in the top hundred, but they're still they're all right. Enough for me to get my pros and cons, and makes it very clear in my head. Awesome, it's great. Yeah, thanks, your source. All right, I'll just see where's Nexus here. I'm just crossing down. Oh, Huda says just use kelp meal instead of sea salt. Yeah, that's the go. Yeah, yeah same yeah. thing, mate. And I love that smell of kelp meal. I don't know about you guys. I grew up surfing, so you it's like you like the smell of kelp. I love it. Oh, bad. wow, it smells like wet shepherd to me. It smells like wet dog, <laughs> <laughs> but I spray it on my plants every day. <laughs> I use it as a foyer spray. Yeah. True, bro. How you going, mate? Nice to see you. And Jeff Rapella. Um, to kelp. Oh, yeah. Here's a question, I think. The kelp from the produce shop is all you need. Yeah. There's different types. You can get the blue. Uh, sorry, there's the brown kelp and the red kelp. Uh, the brown kelp's from the deep sea, and the red's, I think, off Tasmania. And they've got different properties in it. Oh, here we go. Nexus. How you going, mate? Are you more than welcome. Yeah, you need uh, to moderate minerals. these uh, six nine chats. You need to kick those guys yep. out. Kelp meal provides over eighty minerals, nutrients, and natural growth hormones in your soil. Yes, it does. It's similar to coconut water or coconut milk. You know, coconut. Um, they got natural cytokines in them. That was a thing for tissue culture that they used to use back in the day. Nice to see you, Nexus. Here we go. Have you? Huda 420 says, if you cross CBD and THC strains together, yes, I have, mate. What is the optimum ratio to aim for when breeding? Oh, that's a great question. I've oh, crossed, yeah. I've made seven one-to-one -one strains so far. I've got a unbelievable OG Dream, which is a high, it's a 7% turped up, 20% CBD profile. It's got 0% THC or 0 0.1. You smoke the fattest blunt and it does zero to your head it's really strange but it's just tastes yum 
So I've crossed, that's my mother, and I've, I've gone and made, and that's my, so I bred with other seven keepers and crossed them. And I've got a one-to-one -one profile. I don't really like it. I smoke in the high 20s, the mid to high 20s THC. So it doesn't quite get me there. It feels like I need a smidgen more. Um, if my tolerance was lower, it would be rad. So for people who haven't got a high tolerance, these those strains would be exceptional. And I'm got a then I've gone and crossed the one to one back with the original parent, and I did it with Death Bubba, and I made a pineapple Death Bubba three is to one strain cultivar, and that one is really good. So I haven't had the numbers tested. I'd assume it's in the, the low twenties. Um, and about 20, 22% THC with about a 6 or 7% CBD profile, quite high. Um, that's at a guess. So that works with me. So that's something that I'm aiming for is a 3 is to 1. And I think the future might be 3 is to 1 unless you've got a for high tolerant people and for 1 is to 1 with low tolerant people. Thanks for your question, Huda. Wow. Hi, Nexus. Yeah, mate. Woo, it's Nexus. It's the uh, Oh, I'll yield source one sec. He's already in here. I had an interesting uh, question the other day that we just ran in circles around, but I think I answered it about uh, about uh, how people pheno hunt or, or come up with strains. If you take a F1, and you and you made it to itself isn't that an f1 r1 if you take an f1 and then selfed it yeah if you take means, an f1 and you do a fem spray and you yeah. spray it and you spray yeah. it back to itself is that yeah. an f2 r1 or is it an f1 r1 you've well it's, it's the first generation of the inbreed exactly so you've already got a cultivar you can have even an f9 and then you'll go and induce it and change it so that would be the first generation of it changing so you'd have right. to take on that status i would think but i know but 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 if you had the f if you had multiple seeds of the f1 and just made it that that would make it an f2 right if you back crossed it with itself, yeah. Yeah. If you with crossed itself, it with itself, it, it would be. Well, if it's an F1 and you selfed it, it would be. Oh, you're getting me confused here. Would it be F? Yeah, right. That's this. Uh, it, it's it's R1. R1. Is it F2 R1 or is it F1 R1? Yeah, I'll shop, pull up some breeding stuff. Share screen. And uh, high screen. All right, breeding plants plant science genetics uh, it was boggling it was who I, it boggled me I, I couldn't get it I, I i would think it would be a f2 r1 because in the stage of a f2 you have to breed it with itself but well would yeah it makes the genetics twice as strong because you're not introducing uh the possibility that uh, it can spread that three to one ratio there it is it, it's, it's not introducing that possibility if you self it it's just going to make it stronger and it's not going to oh, okay i see it all self-pollination f2 the problem with selfing it is it's it can chop the dna code because you've eliminating when you're inbreeding it you're taking the code what it already has and a lot of times when it goes through it has to go through recombination when it's going from one stage to the other and uh -huh. when they're pairing up where's the chromosomes oh that might no that's not the one this is pretty no i'll confuse you um it's just got to go through recombination and pair it up sometimes it loses its codons um a plant has say thirty-five thousand genes and uh -huh. when you're going to blend them with two different parents See if I can get the one that I want. Oh, shit. Wrong button. Uh, now it's confused me. It's really hard doing this. Um, I'll just share again and start again. <laughs> I'm looking for a, a different breeding one, not that one. Not shop scare. Oh, I want to cross it off. That's how I do it. 
Um, I want the death bubble one. Where is it? The one that I did, the one that chart that I made. Fertilization, pollination, no, seed dot triploids. I even forget the original question now. This, I'll just go back to this thing. Yeah. I'll just so explain I'll... The, how, how it works. Once okay, so when you, yeah, go ahead. You've, you've got a male and a female, that's and then you breed them together, and this is the offspring, the first generation. Yeah, so it's point. the first generation, and then you'll go, and if you pollinate it with either of the parents, that's you're going to strengthen up the genes, and you're going to create further generations. Uh-huh. But if you're going to take it, and then if you're going to self-pollinate it, this isn't in here. This is another chart itself. So the uh -huh. self-pollination restarts it. So if you've got, say, you're starting with F1 and you selfed it, then you're going to make a, the first time it selfed itself. So I class it as the, an S1, selfing. And then I'll go from that. If I'll do it a second time with the same pollen, it'll be an S2 inbreed. That's what I do. Because the F, right, yeah, it stands the for, the F stands for, it's Latin for frilial or something like that Purple, to yeah. mean breeding. Uh -huh. um, so that's why I use the S's and the F's. The F is the progeny from using two parents, which right. usually has um, non-feminized seeds, and the exactly. S has the feminized seeds. But the R means reversal. So well, I've never heard of that. So yeah, R one is yeah. reversal. So if it, if it's an F one R one, then it's an F one that's been reversed. But would it be an F two R one? That's because in the F one stage, you have to go back to either the parents or another sibling from the parents that'll make an F two. I've so never heard a of sibling it. would be also selfing yourself. Because like if your your sibling is your identical twin. If you use no, the identical no. twin, then it would be a F two R one. Yeah, and that would be to... the same as cloning your F one and then mating it. It's you have to induce it to be homozygous. Uh -huh. to, so to get that outcome, you have to either test it off a male and female parent or induce it be with feminized pollen. So. Once you've made those seeds, the daughters of after inducing it, that's your first true inbreed line. So it should right. be your first generation. So it would be F1R1. Mate, but call it whatever you want. I'm just telling you from agricultural right, perspective. Right, right. It would be first generation, but repollinated still. Like it pollinates itself. It would still be in categorized as first generation, correct? Yes, first generation inbreeding. So no, yeah. So no matter how many times we do that, it will still be the first generation because nothing changed. Yes. Great. Yep. Great. You answered the question. That was a tough question. And <laughs> we we went we were live with it last week, and it took all week for us to come up with nothing. Aussie, uh, no. you're the man. <laughs> you're welcome. Mate. I could show you another chart that actually has a selfing chart that I've drawn up as well. That okay. has it. That's what I was trying to find, and that would have just explained it to you a hell of a lot easier. But I. Mm -hmm. Maybe another time we can go into it in detail. We can have a breedings talk about it. I'll um, oh, yes. I'll get back to the, the questions here. Huda four twenty asks, any chance you know about the pink Kush genetic? It was my favourite when I lived in Victoria, BC. Are you kidding? And think you've bred it? Yeah, I know that the owner of that strain. Um, it's called. He's um. It's different from pink kush. It's called pink. Island pink is the name. People can call it pink kush, but the original pink kush is from mainland BC. This is from Vancouver Island, um, and that's what you're talking about, Victoria. That's the capital. It's on you know down the bottom of Vancouver Island where I lived for three years. Um, it's a rad variety. That's what I made pink death bubba, mate. With I crossed death GML's death bubba with this pink cultivar. It's my friend's keeper. He's um, really good mates with GML, and this was his keeper, and um, GML's was the Death Bubba, and then I found I crossed both them, and that's what I made Pink Death Bubba with in Australia here, and um, it's awesome, and I've got Pink actually too, and that's very very nice 
It's a gassy, sweet variety. So if you smoked it and it was gassy and sweet, that's the one, mate, Huda 420. You'll, um, yes, you'll be hoping that we can go legal soon so I can start giving away seeds. And uh, that's probably, I'd even put that in the mix because I've got some of that that I've made. I've got an S3 I've made of that pink variety because that's what I strengthened it up when I made Pink Death Bubba. Thanks for your question, mate. Get well soon, Nexus. Yeah, check to see if Nexus is backstage. Oh, oh, he is. Yes. Nexus, hang on, how do I get you up? Hey, buddy. Wow. Cheers, 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 mate. G'day, mate. I've been here for half an hour. <laughs> oh, far out. I'm so sorry. I'm so hard for me to do all these things at once. I'm even struggling to answer the buddy a simple breeding question before. <laughs> Uh, how are you, mate? Yeah, sore as hell, man. Oh, that's why I'm just like audio only today. Yeah, I'll think of you in best spirits. Nice for you to be here. I'm still just good on you, mate. Any... Oh, All right, just give cheers. Me... I'm going to jump out of here. Cheers, Aussie. Nice to meet you, Nexus. Yeah, JP. Thanks yeah, for turning up. Come on back. Uh, next time you're up, I'll, I'll definitely give you a shout. What's your, hang on, where, where's where, where's your channel? Is it, how do people yeah. find you? Yeah, my channel is a yield source. It's, uh, I'll leave a comment real quick. And those that will see, that's my channel. There you go. And if it doesn't leave it, I, if it doesn't leave a, I just saw your comment in private chat. Yeah, uh, we're doing a grow off right now. So if you guys want some free beans and enjoy, then uh, I would send it out in the mail and we, we plant the beans on October 1st. And that way we can grow together. And when we go live like this, like with Aussie, we'll be able to smoke the same strain together. Interesting. So awesome. oh. yep. And if you are a creator, you have the opportunity to win a Bloom Plus membership. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yep. So um, I'm going to go live with uh, one of the uh, sponsors and we're going to be on for about an hour. And we're going to talk about it. So let, let let us know if you guys want to do like the grow off with us. It's awesome. It's going to be fun. Sounds Good like on. fun. All Thanks right. See you, JP. See you, mate. Later, bro. I'm just getting up and catching up. I'm cruising down the list here. Oops, that's not at one. Just getting to it. Oh, is it the question mark? It will be an Ah, oh, S1. Yeah. Oh, Monty backed it up. Sorry, yield source no, just like I posted a, a chart and a link to um, the Dutch Passion website, which explains it. You know, the oh, difference between F1, F2, S1. Uh, goes in the whole thing. And it's like, these are from some of the world's best breeders. So you can take this as gospel, not internet bullshit. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Um, Anyone who's grown Dutch passion seeds will know. <laughs> Very good. All right, there it is. Um, I'll pink drop a link, Wombat. I suppose, yeah, I'll give you a hit, mate. You can come up for it. I'm just about bail, but there you go. Um, pink Kush. Island Pink has such an amazing flavour. I'll hit you up with cannabis. Ah, it is it. Well done, Huda. Good. You can see you'll be able to... Um, Maybe eventually you might get pink death bubba and you can taste the, the pink in it because certain cultivars in it, certain phenos that you get, um, lean towards island pink side. And um, it's pretty cool because that's, I quite like that one over death bubba. Shh, sorry, GML. Genetic memory. No, not genetic memory farms. Yeah, sorry. But I'll... There you go. Oh, Monty. G'day, Monty. Hey, Monty, yeah, hey, how are you? Good day. We just at the Every Anybody's welcome up, I suppose. Monty or Wombat, or you can come up and say good day. And... question, like with that selfing question earlier, wouldn't it just be an S1? Yeah. Become an S1? Yeah, yeah. S1. Uh, if you keep going back, that will start an IBL of that line. Yeah, if you, like if when you, you do it, back. then you do it again and it becomes an S2, S3, S4, like once you start from there mm. but when yeah. you're taking it a reg would it just like and self it doesn't it just start becoming as s1 yes yes yep. it does. the first generation you'll do it it will 
I've done that with Ireland Pink um, three times, and that's when I made Pink Death Bubba. I crossed an S3 with an S1 Death Bubba to have an F1 offspring that was very stable. Um, mm. And they always come out femmes, don't they? Because they sure do, yep. And that's when the chance you can drop the... When people say they're not as good, they are a bit true. It's not as good because it does clean up the 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 DNA linkages. It gets rid of all of the codons that aren't um, full and they're not complete. Like they just get chopped off. So there's a chance that some pathways can be lost. So when people say that they're not as good, there, there is a chance, but it is stabilizing it and it's cleaning it up a lot. So it's getting rid of all of the crap, you know, that's that could be there that's going to cause problems down the track and it's going to make it more very reliable um, i got a friend, actually, he was in here before, Mangring. Bro, look at someone just spammed the shit again. Yeah, Mangring. I was just about to say. <laughs> did. I was just going, that's pretty cool, eh? Mangring, bro. <laughs> report <laughs> <birth. Found> <laughs> um, he Mangring Grow has done an S6 with his uh, mother of berries. How do they make male seeds? How are they doing that? I don't know. That's a good question. They would, um, I think it's just a chance, off chance that you're going to get it. You'll get that. Why wouldn't they just sell them as regs then? Because, like, on some seed sites, you can buy specific male seeds, yeah. Yeah, you can. Mm. Yep. I don't know. I was just wondering how they're doing that then. Like, because how do you start, like, uh, like, you get yes once, right? So how do you produce, like, an S2, do you got to self it again then? Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you just keep selfing it down the line. Now I understand that. Because I was wondering how the fuck, like, are they breeding from it again? <laughs> the one, <laughs> the numbers next to it, they stand for the generations. Yeah. So you just got to keep on selfing that next generation over and over. Take a That's phone right. off it each time. Yep. Self it. Yeah. And then fucking do that to yep. the client. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll well, do, that was then, my understanding of it, but then before was. And then each time you'll do selective breeding. So you won't just go and cross anything back with anything. So, for instance, like with this, um, you'll crack the pollen from your keeper and then you'll go and self it with one of the best ones that you've seen that you want yeah, to cross. Yeah, you've it. got to spin a hunt through S1s, yeah, and like just like F1s. Yeah, yes. Like they're not as stable. Like it gets stable as you go down the genetics gen generation, so. Yep, you've got to grow out. Well, you can stabilize them later on, but you want to get the traits that you're looking for to blend them together to have the offspring to be the combination of the traits that you want. Yep. Hope that made sense. Yeah, like example, some of these new F6 super bloody auto flowers are, you know, seed to harvest in 60 plus days. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, they must have that um, that g early finishing gene, ELF gene, that I've got in my pineapple that yeah. I've... Um, in high levels, yeah, yeah. Create amber trikes at the... It's so cool. Mm. All right. Well, has anybody, anybody got any other questions? Jeff? Oh. What's this? I'm going well, man. Smoking some nice... Deseeded bird, nice fat mature beans, nice deseeded bud. Yeah, that's the way. Sounds like um, back in the nineties, that sort of talk. <laughs> Deseeded buds. Yeah, man. Like yeah. Some, of the, some of the best weed I've ever smoked in my life was full of seeds, and it looked like crap, but it got you as high as you've ever, ever been. You know. Yeah. Remember in the nineties? Well, I don't know about you, but I always used to say, "Is it since Miller Man?" And because it's a good, you know. Yep. Is it seedless? Yeah, this has got no seeds. Really? Oh, wow. This must be some new variety. It's fucking rad. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I remember the golden Tinsamella and the blonde Tinsamella when it first came out. It looked like blonde hair. <laughs> yeah. Didn't get you that high, though. You have to smoke a lot of it. Yeah. Well, 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 the reality is, like, you know, it was probably about 6% THC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but, but that was what we were used to. Well, that's what we used, used to, to, yeah. It used that's to that's get why the, um, the, the toy strains used to mess us up the most because, like, some of the what 
you know, Thai sativa, it can be like up to 28% and higher. Yep. Yeah, these one to one varieties would be good for the people that don't smoke, haven't got a low tolerance. It's hard when you get higher tolerances. I've got a high tolerance, yeah. yeah. Smoke very high tolerance. Huh. Like a can of Yanby lasted me two days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what, well, I'm on three, I smoke three ounces a month. I have for the last sort of about 30 years. Um, and for me to go on a medical system, it's just difficult. It's working. It's bankrupting. Yeah, it's it is. You've got to do yeah. legal practices to try and support your medicine. That's. I did see a thing that um, was implemented. I should have probably showed it in today's show, but it's yeah. um, the Western Australian Dr. Brian. He's for the Legalisation Cannabis Australia Party. He's yeah. um, implemented the government for a scheme for Medicare to be put cannabis on the PBS system. The only thing about what this has done is that's going to screw us up because we won't be able to grow. So they're just going to make themselves more available to us, import more, so they can just tax it more. And um, so I wasn't really, that's why I didn't really share it on today's show. But that's what he's implicating, is implementing at the moment. Yeah, the, the whole problem with the system is the taxation component of it. Yeah, if that well, wasn't there, they wouldn't need to worry about putting it on the fucking PBS. Yeah, well, there, right. there are companies around that, that will help and there are schemes available. Um, you've just got to find them. Um, I'll have a word to you later about that, guys, because yeah. there are there are ways of getting cheaper legal medical. Um, Did you if, see... If you really require it. Dr. Nexus, you arrived a little bit late. I'm going to show this for you uh, okay. because it was very special. This bit here. Domestic cannabis is finally coming to New Zealand. Right. Can you believe that? Yes, the government there, the ministry has approved homegrown and manufactured medicines. So Kiwis no longer need to import it. Wow. Awesome. Because they've yes, been importing it from Australia. Yeah. And well, did you know also that Colombia has 18% of the medicinal cannabis goes to Australia? Mm -hmm. Blim Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. Apologies. All right. I think we're going to go. It's been over an hour. It's been nearly an hour 20. Thank you, everybody, for yeah. turning up and asking well, your questions. Well, Next well, week, we're going to be talking about the um, microbes again, and I, that was, and smart fertilizers. So, about how to slow release, how to give the plant what it wants, when it wants and to save the environment at the same time. So that's this smart fertilizers I'm gonna go, that's one of the titles for next week. So save your questions to then. Thank you, appreciate everybody for turning up and respect everybody. Um, Dr. Nexus, anything to say on vacating? Yeah, I just, I'd like to thank everyone in the community who's been supportive um, while I've been down, yeah. So thanks guys, your support is heartfelt and truly appreciated. On your Nexus. Monty, you want to say something? Oh, just thanks for everybody tuning in to CC show. Thanks for doing the show, CC. And come on, government, try and do the right thing by the grow by the citizens and legalize for to grow, not just to buy off you guys. We want to try and have a quality of life. Please, you need a, a successful nation that has medicinal cannabis has to have growers as well because they need to know what's going on and not be bluffed by what they're getting told. They need to help so we can use this as a medis medicine. Thank yes. you. We need to make changes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, the everybody, system, for turning up. The system in place next. isn't working. Um, it's only working for the government. So that needs to change. It's got to work for the people because it's a medicine, for God's sake. Yes. Yeah. Some of these people are legit patients that really need it. And, you know, the government should be doing more about it, not just taxing it. Yep, well said, mate. That's right. Good stuff. Thanks, everybody. Turn it up. We'll see you all next week. Happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you. Bye-bye.